Actually, there was a lot of stress on those guys. But what I was really pleased with uh, for those characters, uh, two things. You know, games like that can, how would you say, reveal character, you know? And uh, those two young guys were, were awesome, you know? On the phone, they, they, it was it was they were calm, they were placid. They were, we were talking about what was happening uh, on the field. That was one thing. Was just the character that they that they demonstrated in the game. The second thing, with regards to your particular question specifically, was you know sometimes when all that chaos is happening, you know, your, your feet freak out and your eyeballs go all over the place. And there, it, it was good. I couldn't have been more pleased about that. What, what has Adrian done in the last couple of days that maybe that you're encouraged about the way that he, you know, after that big loss, obviously? What's his reaction been like? Oh, been oh, 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 you, oh, like mine, uh-huh. or you know, it, plan your work, work your plan. Like I said last week, you know that that game's behind us now. It's on to Purdue, right? You know, so um, as I tell those guys, you get 24 hours to mourn or to celebrate, and let's get prepared for the next game that's coming up, you know. Um, Stay non-emotional about it, never get too high, never get too low about those sorts of things, and uh, let's move forward. How's Andrew look? Andrew? Got got the knee thing. Oh, yeah, right? After that first hit? Yeah, is he looking better? (laughs) He asked me who hit him. I said, I don't know. I think it might have been a Mack truck or something. <laughs> so we weren't, I wasn't sure what was happening. So Adrian had to come back in and so on and so forth. And then they tell me Bunchy's going back in, right? And uh, I think he just tweaked his knee a little bit and he got bopped in the head. But, boy, what character and toughness he showed, you know. So I was, I was pleased about that. Scott has <clears throat> talked about not panicking. Um, this staff's obviously been. Oh together. yeah, yeah. How, 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 no, does, no, how does this? How does this group? You know, this this coaching staff work together oh, after a tough week. Oh, you know, um, like we normally would. Like I was saying earlier, you know, we've been through this to some degree, right? And it's uh, go to work, evaluate the game tape from an objective standpoint, and then let's get started on with uh, the preparation for Purdue. Um, yeah, you know, and uh, there's. Um, there's a, a, a sense of, um, how would you say, placidness about us, regardless of the chaos that took place on Saturday, you know. And I feel bad for you guys as well, you know, and the fan. I can imagine you guys are there and this is taking place. And that's got to be hard on you guys too, you know. I get that. And But for us, hey, evaluate the game. Let's move forward and let's get on to Purdue. Coach Frost said Saturday that uh, you guys were limited to two guys at quarterback. So given that, uh, how I'm sorry? Matt, so Coach Frost said Saturday that you guys were limited to two people at QB. So how does Matt Masker kind of fit into the quarterback situation? Well, Matt's taking, taking reps with right, for us right now just in case there were an emergency that were to occur uh, from that standpoint. But he's doing real well, you know, and he's doing good in meetings like he has been all since he started with us, and he's getting more reps in practice and all that sort of stuff. So Do you feel confident he'd be able to step in and if, if called upon, if Bunch is, you know, if it's knee injury? Is, is if Matt Masker had to come in, Matt Masker would be just your typical Nebraska kid. He's going to be a tough ass. Um, he's going to do the things that he needs to do. Um, he's going to do his job within the framework of those things that we prepared him to do. He'll be just fine. Scott seen. You've seen Adrian play a lot over the last few months. Scott yeah. said he needed to see that he could protect himself. Did, what, what did you see? Did you think that he was pretty close to his capacity? Yeah. On Saturday? Yeah, I did. And, you know, uh, you asked me the question earlier. The thing about it was that w- when he had to go, he went. When he had to escape, he escaped. When he was able to sit in there and go through the reeds and keys despite all the chaos that was swirling around him, he did. Uh, so, from a uh, physical standpoint, as you're asking, and a mental standpoint, absolutely. Yeah, I, he's, he's, he's good to go right now. I feel real comfortable. He was pretty hard on himself after the game. He said he didn't think he did anything right at all. Do you have to build him up at all? No, no, no. You know, um, I think as, as, as quarterbacks, we're, we're, we're groomed to probably be much too hard on ourselves in, in games like that, which is understandable. But one of the things that, that will 
help us through this storm, if you will, is our philosophical position from the standpoint that, you know, really we're one cog in the wheel of success or failure, truly. And that allows us not to get too crazy about ourselves when things are going really well and certainly not too crazy about ourselves when things aren't going so well, you know. Uh, that's an important component. Um, and then the other piece of the puzzle is to, to understand that, you know, in terms of uh, importance, you know, uh, we're no more important than anybody else on the field in terms of function, you know. So uh, that keeps us grounded, you know, and i got to continually talk to them about those those sorts of things because the way they grow up is so different as quarterbacks. Uh, you know, Bunchy made the comment to me that in his past it was, well, how you go, we go. Well, that's not always the case, you know. If you lose 42 to 41, you still lose and all of those. Anyway, that piece of the puzzle is important for our, our guys to understand. Both of those guys have shown a willingness to stand in and, and take a big shot as they're yeah. throwing the ball. Yeah. Can you teach that? Is that something that they just have innately? Where does that come from? Uh, I think part of that is teaching, but I think innately that, that uh, Bunch uh, and Adrian, Masker and Noah are tough asses. They're not candy asses, and they're going to sit in there. And, and uh, if, if while they're throwing the ball, they're going to get smacked upside the head, so be it. Let's, let, let's get smacked upside the head, and then, as Frosty says, get up, bounce up. You know, show them your chest. Yeah, I'm okay. I'm fine. Let's get on to the next play. So some of that can be taught because we go through our bag drill, but some of that is just innate in the, in the kind of uh, athletes they are and their psychological makeup. How much during the week do they get knocked around? Oh, yeah. You know, there, there are things that happen in the, in the course of practice where, you know, they're going to get jostled, which is fine. Um, so I never get crazy about that even though despite the fact they have a green jersey frosty has a great phrase you know during practice don't play behind your green jersey right if you got to go you got to go if you get smacked you get smacked let's move on right right so just because they're wearing that green jersey doesn't mean they can't no i mean they're yeah they're gonna get popped you know so it's gonna happen sometimes you know and then i make sure that we have that bag drill when they're dropping back to pass i'll smack them upside the head with the bag and they have to throw the ball downfield so that that's a little bit of a teaching component as well but to go back to what you asked parker it's it's their psychological makeup they're tough kids man there's not a candy ass in the group what would just getting a win do for everything it just seems like oh that's all you need and maybe things could settle down a little bit and you guys could find the rhythm that you're well, you for. know i you know I, that's that's an emotional sort of uh, attachment to winning and losing you just can't afford you know, our guys can't our, our guys can't afford that. The guys in my room can't afford that. Even though, despite the fact I've told them, you know, there's no margin for error. Now, how hard is that? You know, but there really isn't. There's no margin for error. Um, but with regards to when, yeah, that that that'd be tremendous. You know, probably for the Husker fans more. <laughs> God love them. You know, and you guys as well. Um, I don't take that lightly. But at the same time. Uh, from an emotional standpoint, okay, great. Let's move on to our next game. And, uh, let's prepare the same way we did for this Purdue game. The throw uh, on the first drive Saturday. <laughs> oh man! Is there any, is there anything that Adrian would do differently if he, he went back to that, or is that just a good play by a defensive? No, player? you know, and and you know, we we always categorize why interceptions you've heard me talk yep. about that before right yeah. so why that's why an that? aog man that falls under the category of aog it's an act of god it's just it's, you know it's just one of those things that happened because i i was concerned as to whether maybe he was uh, a little new nonchalant with his uh, with his mechanics which can create that sort of problem sure. you know and so I was interested in looking at that. And man, he was as crisp as could be. His eyeballs were good. His feet were good. The trajectory was good. It was just, man, one of those things that happened. You know, and it was a beautiful play call and the perfect time there in the, in the, in the defensive structure that we anticipated them to be in and everything was set up. And, you know, the football gods sometimes get you, you know, and, 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 and lady football, boy, she... She can be fickle, you know, and, and you love her to death and you want her to be your girlfriend and, you guys, you're trying to, you're coaxing her every way you can, you know, and but she'll still turn your, her back on you. And it's just, it's just one of those things, you know. And um, 
that's how the ball goes. Tanner said it was a, a run call initially, or it was RPO. So that's Adrian. It, it, that's Adrian it, identifying it, and it's, seeing something. It, it, right? It's an RPO, yeah. and um, we're looking at um, the linebacker who's critical to us in that particular play. We thought he would do what he did, and uh, he did what we thought he would do. Our receiver is going right through the tube, and man, just. It is what it is, man. It was, it was a tough break for us. The first week, you said, against Colorado, you said Adrian was pretty good after things went a bad play when he was yeah. talking to you Saturday when it's just going all wrong. How, how was he? He was awesome. Mm -hmm. and, and both him and Bunchy were. You know, it wasn't the most uh, elegant of football games for us, right? Yeah. But um, they they come to, to the sidelines after every uh, series, and we talk, right? right? And, and they were great. It, talking about what was happening, what was going on, what you see, what didn't you see, and it was very calm and relaxed. There was no pissing and moaning about one thing. They're going to just do our job and let everybody else take care of their business, right? Well, then, as the game went on, I noticed that, well, that they weren't getting to the phone. So I, I got on the phone to Masker, and I said, hey, you got to get the guys over. This is the process. Come hell or high water, this is what we do. When, when a series is over, you guys all come to the, to, to the phone and we talk. So regardless of what's happening, this is how we do things. This is our process. So make sure that happens. So, but they were great. They were awesome. Were you close to putting Masker in when, when Bunch went down? Was there ever a discussion like, all right, we got to put Masker in, or did you, was he just not ready for that type of situation? I wasn't uh, privy to the, to the discussion that was taking place on the sideline, so I was kind of unaware. But what I'm assuming happened was that is when uh, 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 Bunchy went down, Adrian was fine to go in. You know what I'm saying? He was okay. He could, and then the discussion was, well, Bunchy's going to be okay, so we're, we're golden. There was never that, there was never that sense of emergency or chaos that would have possibly ensued had that been the case in terms of how you identified maybe Masker having to go in, sort of thing. Yeah. Okay. Do you at least feel good? Do you at least feel? I'm good? fine. I'm fine. I'm good. Do you at least feel good that Adrian has made it through these? last couple of weeks to where he is right now health-wise yeah. after Yeah, everything. yeah, he's doing, I mean, he's doing real well. He's running around real well, you know, and doing that sort of stuff, and the game was, was part of that. Uh, he got a little tweak there, so we were concerned a little bit about that. But from his, um, from the emotional standpoint, which is critical as anything in the physical standpoint, he's, he's, he's doing really well. He's, he really is. Yeah. Thank you, Coach.